at all about uh, what's going on with uh, the show. Uh, so, hey, 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 what's up, Bishop Brazel? I see you. Depends on who's at quarterback for Washington. Uh, JD, I see you, Bishop Brazel. I'm coming just a second to your comment because you're absolutely right. JD, are we getting hot or is this an aberration? My answer is, and of course, this is my opinion, I believe that we are doing both. Yes, yes. I believe it's both. I'll start with your first point. Is the team getting hot? Yes. Yes. The 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 offense, uh, because of the offensive line and the guys playing together, no injuries. They've been playing together now for the last. Hey, mama, I see you. Uh, for the last two, three weeks, there have been really no injuries on the line. So what you're getting now is the guys meshing, playing together well, well, playing together well, and playing as a unit. The old myth of saying that guys playing together consistently makes you better. I don't think we can argue that point because the offensive line uh, has played well. They have. Uh, they have. They're protecting uh, Dalton well. Uh, I'm not going to even talk about the the running uh, uh, the running game uh, yet. Uh, they have played. They 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 they're building together. They're playing well. Dalton has not hit the ground a whole lot. Uh, he's playing well. Uh, I will say that, uh, JD. I see this long note you done put in. I'm feel the, uh, I'm about to look at it in a minute and read it. Let me go to your next point. You say is this an aberration? I'm gonna say yes to that too. This is the reason why. It's because of who we played, and I don't care what the teams have done since we played them. Let's look at it. We beat Cincinnati uh, with a quarterback. They just got into the lineup. Joe Burrow was not there. So that's just a week of practice. He comes in. We beat Cincinnati. Now the very next week, Cincinnati beats the Pittsburgh Steelers. That same quarterback had another week to play. He had another uh, week to play and, uh, I mean, to practice with his team, and they look better, and they beat the Steelers, a division rival. I, I, don't, I don't care about that. Uh, I don't I don't really don't even care about that. So. That, that's what's going on with that. Uh, we beat uh, Philly, of course, uh, when Philly was hot. That was a big game. Uh, and and we, that was a big one uh, because Philadelphia had been beating momentum, building momentum, uh, and, and but yet they are a uh, whatever they are, 5 and 10 or whatever, uh, and we eliminated them. Uh, we we kind of put rain on on uh, Jalen Hurts' parade, who was hot, uh, and the defense, of course, uh, played well without a doubt uh, that game. So uh, it's both on the defensive side of the ball. There's no no way you can't say that the defense is not hot. The defense is hot, no question. Uh, the, the turnovers that they have had is is, is you know. I think they got 10 turnovers in the last three weeks. I mean, that that's 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 monumental. And here's the thing. We still not good against the run. I mean, we still giving up over a hundred some odd yards, uh uh over a hundred some odd yards game and running game, 120, 130, all that kind of stuff. We're not good. Now, some of that is kind of twisted because Jalen Hurts runs the ball and gets a little quarterback run and that may be for you know 20 25 yards a pop and that adds on to the running thing so I, I ain't really talking about that I'm talking about a running back getting the ball and pounding the ball and pounding the ball we're still not good at all against the run however the the turnovers kind of balance off the parts where we're not good at uh and so what has happened is they have made some timely turnovers in the last few weeks. It's no question about that. They have they have done uh, 
they have done what they needed to do. And that is the reason why we're winning the turnover battle in the games. And that is why we are uh, alive. Is no question about that. Hello, uh, Monter. How you doing? What's going on? Good to see you. Welcome to the show uh, on Podbean. What's going on? Uh, where are you from? Just to let me know. Uh, Montour, or what, I believe that's your name. Let me know if you are, where you're from. And if you have a podcast yourself, I'll follow your show. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, listen, so the defense is doing what, hey, some of the things that we thought was going to happen at the beginning of the year, they're doing it at the right time. Randy Gregory is a monster. Y'all hear me. Uh, the man, you know, the man is blessed. That's the only thing I can say. He has a unique skill. He's a unique football player that this guy can be out of the league for one, two years, come right back in, and once he gets his football conditioning on, uh, he can actually dominate a game from the position that he's in. He is special. He is special. Randy Gregory is special. Uh, and is is you know, what we're seeing is what Jerry Jones saw when he drafted him. The kid is just different. He he's not, he's not, you know, th these type of guys don't 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 just grow on trees. They th these these guys come around maybe once every you know, five to ten years. This this guy is different. Uh he is. He's different. He he can he he demands respect when defensive offensive coordinators put their game plan together. You can you better understand that they're looking trying to see what number 94 is. Uh that is is no question. Uh Demarcus Lawrence is different. Uh he he's just not Guys, I'm, I'm serious, and you know I'm I'm one that would jump on Demarcus Lawrence, uh, but since he got hot, maybe about five six weeks ago, he stayed consistent. And whether that is because he was hurting or whatever the case may be, when he is healthy, he is a problem. Randy Gregory is a major problem, uh, and I I sit there and look at him, and I say like, wow, uh, and he's not big in body structure. But, man, can he rush the pass and he can get in there. Uh, and he is a serious problem. So that also adds to, uh, to, to what the defense is doing. I've always said this. Hey, Miss James, I don't know who you are, but good. Uh, he said he, he already talking about looking to the, <laughs> looking to the playoffs. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I, I, I will say this. I've always said in the case of the Cowboys, and this goes years back, this goes back to the to the Romo days. Uh, I don't go back to Jimmy Johnson because Jimmy Johnson was a great coach. Uh, it, um, uh, Noah Turner was a great offensive coordinator. Um, uh, and all those guys that coached back with Coach Johnson back then. I don't say this back to him that day. But ever since then, We've always been in a position where the talent have to override the bad coaching. I, that I just said something there, if y'all don't know. Uh, the talent level sometimes is so good that it overrides bad coaching. Randy Gregory, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, Amari Cooper, uh, and in the games on Sunday. Uh, uh, Michael Gallup. Uh, uh, hey, hey, Wendy, I see you okay. Uh, Michael Gallup, uh, CD Lamb, of course, Ezekiel uh, Elliott, uh, Pollard. These guys have so much talent that they can make up for a bad call that Kellen Moore made. It, you know, uh, Michael Gallup, I've seen Kellen Moore call bubble screens, and I can't stand it. Uh, I can't, uh, but Michael Gallup talent is so good that he can catch that little bubble screen, get one block and break it for almost 60, 70 yards. Uh, Mar Cooper can catch a five yard slant like he did break one tackle 
run for another 60 yards and everybody's saying, woo, Dalton on fire. No, it's because Cooper has superior talent and can break, make a five-yard game look big and make Kelly Moore look good, even though the call sometimes may be like, a, what was that? What was the call? But they're so good. Uh, on defense, Mike Nolan has been the body of work. Uh, Mike Nolan, when you add it all up, is not probably going to be our defensive coordinator. But the talent level, has 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 become so you know takes over, and even though the offensive team is driving and and making it look easy, Jalen Hurts make a bad decision and the Brown pick it off in the end zone, and then you know bow down. But they don't count the whole drive where we weren't stopping nobody. But 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 and the Brown catch it in the end zone, and then everybody said, "Whoa, the defense is hot! Oh, the defense is playing well!" No, you just got drove on easily. For 60, 70 yards. We bend, but we didn't break. So uh, you know, there's some there's some there's some things here that I I'm I, I see. Uh I I I'll give credit. Uh the special teams, I see you, E. Let me say that. The special teams, in my opinion, probably play played the best. Uh I ain't gonna say play the best, but they've been consistent more than than both the offense and the defense, there, there have been some good special team plays. I mean, how many times we've seen Pollard have some good kickoff returns? Uh, we've seen C.D. Lamb uh, have some nice punt returns, you know, not breaking the one, but I'm saying catch one and maybe run something back maybe 15 yards or so. That's good business. Uh, they have not given up uh, a kickoff return. I don't remember it at least off the top of my head. Uh, they have not given up a punt return. Uh, so the special teams have played well. Uh, the offense, I say this about Ezekiel Elliott because some of y'all have heard me talk about Ezekiel Elliott. i say this tonight. Uh, let me go to Pod Bean. Okay, nobody's talking on there. Hey, uh, I'll say this about uh, I'll say this about um, Ezekiel. That that Tony Pollard game the week before showed a little fire in them, didn't it? <laughs> Last week, we saw Ezekiel Elliott run harder than he ever have this whole year. Now, some would say he's hurt. He was banged up and all that, and he sat out a week, and he got his legs back under him. Okay, that's fine. But please factor in that Tony Pollard showing out against the 49ers, that, that didn't light him up, and Ezekiel Elliott heard all that talk about how Tony Pollard sh should be starting and, and, and all that kind of stuff, and and Tony Pollard, can he be the workhorse running back? And Tony Pollard this, Tony Pollard that, Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard, and Ezekiel was just sitting there getting ticked off. That's that's what happened. That that's really that, you know I I know his knee and his ankle, whatever y'all want to say. That's fine. Sometimes when you feel a little fire coming from the backside, it it it, it makes you want to get the ball and and prove to people that, hey, y'all must have fun done forget who I am. And Ezekiel finally uh, got his 100 yards in a game, ran the ball hard. However, as I told you before, sometimes the talent level takes over the bad coaching. Here's my point. Ezekiel Elliott still didn't get the ball 20 times in the game. I, 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 I still don't understand why Ezekiel Elliott can't get the ball like Derrick Henry gets the ball. I don't understand why he can't get the ball like Aaron Jones from Green Bay. I, 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 don't, understand, I don't understand why he don't get the ball like Alvin Kamara from the Saints. I don't understand why this man will not, Kellen Moore, will not call a game and give your best player the football like he's supposed to get it. He still didn't get it 20 times. Y'all look at the stat. Y'all see? Yeah, he got his 100 yards because he had that big late four-quarter run. He, he finally got it because he had that big run there, but 
Why can't he get the ball 20 plus times a game? I think Kellen Moore is allergic to it. I understand that he the best match with the Philadelphia Eagle little cornerback over there and, and and Dalton who had his best game without a doubt. I understand that, but I, I still don't understand. When it was time to run it, he was still passing. We were ahead. Time could have came off the clock. We still want to line up and throw it and all that. And Ezekiel was, was running pretty good. I don't understand it. I just don't. I don't understand Keller Moore. But but I'm used to it now because he's been consistent. All you got to do is look at the games week by week and, and tell me how many times have Ezekiel Elliott this year has gotten the ball more than 20 times. I, 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 it ain't many. If he did, it's not many. It may be one. I, I mean, I can look it up, but I, I don't feel like looking that up right now. I'm serious. It is it, 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 it's mind boggling to me how Kellen Moore continues to just do what he does. Now, Kellen Moore, as I told you guys weeks and weeks ago, that I figured that by because we heard it last year. We we heard it last year. Hey, 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 Wendy, I appreciate you. I heard this last year that Kellen Moore name started coming up for college uh, things, college jobs. Uh, his name started getting some recognition uh, last year. So that's a little bit uh, for, you know, his name just started popping up. And I knew that this year, I, but I was counting on Dak being here and the Cowboys under more, no matter how much we talk about them, at the end of the year, the Cowboys was ranked in the top three in the entire NFL for offense. So this guy has a top five offense every year that he's been a coordinator. Uh, and this year, he's proven, I give him this, He's proven that he still can draw up a somewhat of a plan uh, and still have a, a decent offense. And there's no reason why, because we have a backup quarterback. We've had three quarterbacks this year. And he still is still putting up numbers uh, offensive-wise. As I've always told you, from the 20, our 20, to the opponent's 20, Kellen Moore can light you up. He is from from the twenty yard line, all the way going to the opponent's twenty yard line. Kellen Moore can light you up. He can. He can move the football. Kellen Moore, however, from the twenty yard line in, which is what we call the red zone, in my opinion, he is the worst play caller in the NFL. The red zone is what because. I don't understand what he should do, he don't do. What he could do, he don't do. I mean, when he's supposed to run it, he pass it. When he's supposed to pass it, he run it. And I just don't get, I don't get uh, some of the things that he is doing as far as play calling goes inside the red zone. I get it from the 20 to the 20. Oh, man, he, he dials it up smooth. But regardless of that, I knew that this year his name would start coming up more and more. And sure enough, as I said weeks ago, I was one of the first ones that, well, we knew I already knew. Everybody said Kellen Moore got to go. Well, it looks like that we are going to get our wish because the boys at state, uh, uh, Boise State, his alma mater, where he played football, where he was a All American uh, quarterback uh, for for Boise State. It looks like they're knocking on his door, and they're asking him to come home and take over the football program. If you've been with me for the last three four weeks, I have told you that Kellen Moore's offense would be perfect for a college football team. He loved to spread it out. He loved all these trick plays. He loved, uh, you know, trying to be the smartest guy in the room. All that stuff 
will work in college. There's no question. Plus, when you start talking about money, uh, I'm quite sure Boys Estate is willing to pay him uh, a nice piece of change for him to leave the NFL to come to college, and that's what it's going to take. It's obvious that they're willing to do that. Uh, he gets to run a program. It's his program. It's going to be kind of hard to turn that down, plus the element of him coming home is big. And so I believe that Kellen Moore is leaving us. Uh, I believe he's on his way out. Some of you have been reading the reports. Uh, Jerry Jones himself has said when the when it's, when it's there, and I'm paraphrasing, he's saying when the opportunity is there, you got to take it. So Jerry Jones uh, is the same guy who told Mike McCarthy when he came in, now look, you can bring in your own staff, but you're going to have to keep Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore is going to be here. Uh, so you just got to deal with it. You know, uh, you can't bring everybody else in, but Kellen Moore is going to call the e plays. That's what Jerry Jones essentially was telling Mike McCarthy. And, of course, he did. And now that he's the same guy that said, hey, when you get this opportunity, you got to go. Translation of that is he's tired of Kellen Moore play calling just like we are. So now he dresses up and says, hey, get on. Hey, God bless you, my brother. Yeah, yeah. God bless you, my brother. Get on out of here. You can go. Uh, I see you wearing a JJ as a serpent. Yeah, he real slick. He real slick. One year he says, you got to keep Kellen Moore. Now all of a sudden he got to go. Jerry Jones is the same guy that when Wade Phillips was a head coach, he made Jason Garrett stay and paid him more, more than the head coach. They called it a coach in waiting. <laughs> so the way Phillips was a dead duck to Jerry Jones, he already knew who he wanted to take over. He did that. Now is all of a sudden the golden boy killing more. Now what he's saying is, y'all, you just gone. You, you gone go to boys. You know, they, well, you, you got to take it. You got to do it. So I really believe Jerry wants him gone too. Uh, to be honest with you. Uh, that's what I have to say about Kellen Moore. Sometimes the talent overrides the bad coaching. Uh, we saw that with the with the big plays of, of Lamb and the big plays of uh, of uh, Mari Cooper, uh, Michael Gallup. Those guys made up for some of the calls that were made. So, but it, hey, we put up big points. We've been putting up big points the last few games. For the Niners, we put up big points. Uh, we put up big points uh, last week. Uh, we put up points the week before. Uh, so, against Cincinnati. Uh, so, you, you can't argue with the stats. They are playing well. They are. They are playing well. I, I can't deny it. they're playing well. I don't care who it is we played. They are playing well. They are. Uh, so, they are. We, we have to take that which, of course, leads to this Sunday. It leads to this Sunday. It's all on the line. Uh, it, it's all on the line. Wendy said, last, how long did J.J. Jerry Jones taking full responsibility last till the end of the article? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that, Wendy. He ain't took no responsibility. He always find a way to justify some of the things that is being done. That's Jerry. That's Jerry. Jerry never take real blame. He always finds a way to justify things and smooth it out with some of his great talking uh, that he's done over the years. So uh, he'll never do that. Instead of looking at six and nine, he'll say he'll focus in on the last three games, which is what a lot of Cowboy fans do. Uh, we're hot. Uh, Buddha said, truth and ladder. We score 30, we win. Uh, it seemed to be that way, Buddha. Uh, if we, we, it's hard if a team scores thirty, usually you know the t other. I mean, you're not giving up thirty, but with our team, uh, we give up thirty. <laughs> so I, you know, I just don't, I just don't know. Uh, it all leads to this Sunday, uh, where we played the Giants in 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 New York City. Uh, we're on the road. Uh, and we, I got to just say it, I, you know, we are a better football team than the Giants are. And the way we're playing, uh, 
I, 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 I see why Vegas has us. Buddha, help me out here. What is the line on the game? Uh, what is the line on the game Sunday? Uh, Buddha uh, knows this information. Uh, what is the line on the game this Sunday uh, for the Cowboys and the Giants? Even though we're on the road, I believe we're a favorite. I believe we're favored to win. So Vegas sees us just the way that I do, uh, the way I see us. I, I see us uh, not having Pac Stadium's help. Yeah, I think this is one of these games, J.D., that you're absolutely right. I believe this is one of these games where I believe the Giants would love to have their fans there for this game. Uh, this is one of these years that – uh, where you can actually admit that uh, fans not in the stands uh, are not uh, okay. We're three point favorites against Buddha says we're three point favorites against uh, the Giants. So Vegas sees it like we see it. The bottom line is Vegas knows that they figured that we are a better football team coming in. We play with hot. We're playing well. Uh, the Giants have injuries. Uh, Saquon Barkley is not playing. We're dealing with Alfred Morris and and uh, Gallman, and and I'm not scared of them at all. Uh, we're playing against. I think Golden Tate is out. Uh, I'm not scared of them. I'm not scared of uh, Daniel Jones. Uh, we're not playing a running. He can run. Uh, he Dan, don't get don't get it twisted now. Y'all have seen it. Uh, Daniel Jones can run, and he has timely uh, runs that we've seen through through this year. But he just don't scare you like a Jalen Hurts or a Lamar Jackson guys who we played. Russell Wilson, uh, uh, Kyler Murray. You know Daniel Jones just don't scare us like that. So I'm not scared of the Giants have a have had a pretty good defense this year, uh, but they have let go. Uh, they have some injuries on there also. Uh, I'm not scared of the Giants at all. So I'll go on record now by saying that I really do believe that the Cowboys are going to beat the Giants. I believe it. Uh, it will carry us to the 79 year at the beginning of the season or during the season, uh, when I started seeing how bad the division was, I said that seven wins this year will probably win the division. I said that. You have to go back and check me out and all that kind of stuff. I said seven wins will probably win this division, and one way or another, that's exactly what is going to happen. Whether it's Washington wins, with seven wins, whether it's uh, whether it's us or whether the Giants some way beats us, seven wins is going to win this division this year. Uh, it is what it is. The Cowboys are playing hot. They're doing well. They've done that. Look, the playoffs actually have started with the Cowboys, whether you know it or not, almost two or three weeks ago. Let, let's 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 just be real. They couldn't afford to lose. Uh, they could not afford to lose nothing. Uh, there's no question. They have stepped up. They have. I, I know I know. a lot of us wanted to draft. A lot of us. Uh, uh, I like that, Ekush. I saw you, Wendy. I didn't read your, your thing, Ekush. Uh, I see you, LC. Hey, man, how you doing? Um, uh, if we play defense like I'm going back to LC's coming, he said if we played defense like we played this past Sunday, we would be all right. I agree 100. percent He could say that's actually like a six point favorite because I think the home team gets an automatic three. You're absolutely 100 percent correct, E. Uh, so I mean, so when you look at that, uh, I say, hey Kevin, what's up, man? My brother is here. Uh, hope you're doing all right, Kev. Um. Uh, I, I, hey, the way you look at it, you you can't you can't really say nothing. Uh, 
You really can't. I mean, we playing well. I mean, we, it's not our fault that we had Cincinnati without Joe Burrow. It's not our fault that the 49ers were banged up and all that kind of – it's not our fault. It's not our fault that, you know, I'm going to give real credit to the Eagle game, though, because Philadelphia was riding high. So I, I'm i going to really give credit for us beating them uh, without a doubt because that was – that was big. A lot of people thought we were going to lose that game. Uh, so, but it's not our fault. That's what was on schedule. We played who was on the schedule. We don't know who's going to show up. We got injuries too. This is all to my little haters that's peeping in. I don't want to hear nothing about your 49ers. All y'all was hurt. And all, hey, we, we hurt too. <laughs> I mean, y'all must think we coming in with a, with a full loaded gun. No, 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 no. I got a whole offensive line that's backups. Y'all, the whole line, the, except Connor Williams, the whole offensive line is backup. I got a backup quarterback playing. Please don't tell me. Well, hey, you got to end the dog in the front. No, he's a backup. When you finish talking, he's a backup. I got a tight end, Dalton Schultz. I, and you know what? I'm going to give some credit here to Dalton Schultz because he is proven. Let me give a little two-minute plug to him. He is proven. That he's a tied in. I don't care what y'all say. He has had a real good year. Dalton Schultz has played has had a real good year. And I'm telling you right now, not that this is gonna happen. I'm just saying if Dalton Schultz was in the free agent, uh in the free agency, I'm telling you that Dalton Schultz would have a lot of interest. He has proven that he can play this game from the tied in position. We didn't know that. Uh, you know, you had Glance, he had a nice little reputation coming out of Stanford, but you just never know till you get uh you just never know till you get your chance. Dogs and shoots have had a good year. However, he's a backup because Blake Jarwin was supposed to be my uh was supposed to be my uh starting tight end this year. We go to the defensive side. I ain't got to tell you. I mean, we lost. We lost Gerald McCoy, we lost Tristan Hill. We lost cornerbacks at the beginning of another year. We lost uh, when Sean Lee finally come back. Sean Lee played a good game Sunday, y'all, as expected. As long as he's healthy, Sean, 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 look, Sean is dangerous. He's a good linebacker when he's healthy. Uh, we lost. We had lost LVE again. I mean, good lord, we we lost. So I don't want to hear nothing about who y'all didn't have. You know, I don't want to hear nothing about. We we lost all pros. We lost all pros too. Huh? I, I don't want to hear that. You play who you play on your schedule and you let it be. So the Cowboys have played well for the last three weeks. They did what they're supposed to do. Uh they if they were supposed to beat them, they did. Okay. Uh the Philly game, a lot of y'all thought that we were gonna struggle against Philly. I did too. I thought that Jalen Hurts would have a gigantic game, and he did. Uh, he just made some mistakes. Uh, and, and and let me say this in fairness, because on this show here, we believe in fairness. Uh, we believe in fairness. I got to give credit to Mike Nolan. I got to. I do. I got to give credit to him today. Because Philadelphia, those first two drives, was playing – uh, mad in football. They did what they wanted to do. Deshaun Jackson was jogging in the end zone, did a backflip when he scored, all that kind of stuff. I saw all that, came back and scored easily. I ain't hear nothing from Deshaun Jackson after the touchdown. I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think, uh, I ain't seen nothing from Deshaun Jackson. And they shut them down. And matter of fact, if you know the game, you know just as well as I know that the Philadelphia Eagles did not score. They did not score the second half. When is the last time that this team have not allowed a team to score in the second half? I don't care. I mean, come on now. We got to give Mike Nolan credit uh, because whatever adjustment that they made, and one of those adjustments, they played three safeties uh, where one was used as a spy for for, uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, and I think that made a big difference because what it did, it put a lot of speed out on the field. Uh, it did. It put a lot of speed on the field. 
and sometimes speed can make up uh, for mistakes. Hey, I see you, Macho. What, what's going on? Uh, hello, J, JD says, best man win. John Steele got to prove to be durable. Uh, that's because E. Kush, what you say, E. Kush? He could say, I think Jaron will edge him out through his speed. The thing that you have to keep in mind, hey, everybody on Podbean, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey, Light Bright. Hello, Miss Ty. Hello, beautiful chaos. Hello, Nick. Hello, Junior. What's going on? Y'all talk to me on on uh, on Podbean. I'm floating in, seeing your questions and your comments. I'm going back and forth with that. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, tuning in. Let me know where you're from. Oh, everybody that's on Podbean, let me know. Uh, here's the thing that I want to say about Jarwin, uh, JD, and, and whoever else is in there. Um, uh, Jarwin actually is really a wide receiver dressed up as a tight end. He played wide receiver in college. So, what does that let us know? It lets us know that he has speed, uh, you know, more speed as far as, as a tight end goes. Jarwin, when he was playing last year, was a problem whenever he got the ball. Seemed to be always open because he was always being guarded by a linebacker and sometimes a safety, which he's much bigger than most safeties. So he's a problem when he's out there. Uh, uh, I think he he is he's he is a little bit better than than Schultz, but Schultz is solid, man. Listen, Schultz is solid. Uh, I see you, Macho. I ain't gonna even knock you, Macho. Macho is is in a, is one of my cowboy brothers, and Macho uh, have told us for the last five to six weeks he is held on to the line and saying that the Dallas Cowboys is gonna win this division. A lot of my brothers that's in my group, we just let them talk and say, "Hey, we don't see it." He said he saw it. And Macho, today I got to give it to you. What you have told us for the last five to six weeks has finally come to pass. Uh, all we got to do is win on Sunday. I can't even knock you right now. Uh, as of now, you you hit the bullseye. You are Yahtzee. You <laughs> you are you you are the man. Uh, I can't, I can't even say nothing to you because you called it, uh, and he did say it, and it all sets up for Sunday. Uh, so the question is, uh, can we pull it off? Personally speaking, I believe we will. However, because of the way we played this year, even us winning or even us going down there and stomping a mud hole in the Giants really don't mean nothing if the Washington football team pull it off. So, uh, only thing that we can say is, hey, they finished the year strong, but we didn't, we couldn't do it because we played so bad at the beginning and the middle of the year. Uh, Washington plays Philadelphia this Sunday night. They too have it all on the line. Uh, they, 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 they will know one way or the other. They, they have to win regardless, uh, because whoever wins our game, uh, if they lose, that's the team that will win the division. So Washington knows before even stepping out on the field that they got to bring it Sunday night if they want to make the playoffs. They know that. That there's there's no that that they know it, so they're gonna bring their best effort. However, uh, they got some eternal issues, and they, as you know by now, they just let go of Haskins. So the dream of us having Haskins play is dead. If you would tell me that Dwayne Haskins was playing this Sunday for the for Washington, I would say we're gonna win this this vision. Uh, but. The worst thing that can happen is, is that it looks like there you go, there you go, Bishop. There go Washington. He's a Washington fan. The key thing, the worst thing that can happen for us, uh, is that if Alex Smith plays, uh, because I told y'all weeks ago, 
uh, that Alex Smith at this stage of his career and compared to the quarterbacks in our division was the best quarterback in the, in the NFC East. He was, uh, at the time, uh, when you line up the coaches who had the best coach and forgive me for being a little old school, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'm from the, from the old school. I believe that a, whoever has the best coach and the best quarterback usually wins. Uh, that's where I, 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 you know, you may not agree with me. That's fine. Uh, I understand. Uh, I've just seen it for so long. Uh, I've just seen it so long. Hey, hey, Junior. Oh, oh you, oh, LC, you done switched over to the power band. I appreciate you, man. I see you. Uh, you saying I meant, remember the Giant winning the Super Bowl having this same type of season? Well, not, not really. Um, uh, well, not, not really, LC. Uh, the, the Giants won the Super Bowl that year with a nine and seven record. They ain't winning no seven and nine. And really, at doing this time, hey, I got to admit to you, uh, you know, usually what we have seen throughout the years is that whoever is getting hot at the end becomes a problem in the playoffs. That's, that's what I've seen. And the records, of course, are thrown out of the window once you make the tournament. Uh, you're all zero and zero. Uh, so I, I've seen teams get hot. You're right. The Giants that year was nine and seven. They won on the road and beat everybody. Went to Green Bay and won the NFC Championship game. And that, that frost out there and that snow beat, beat uh, Aaron Rodgers then. Exactly. Uh, so a team can get hot and, and they can get hot and can get that confidence going and, and get that little mojo going and they can, they can, they can get things going and cooking. And before you know it, you're looking up and you're in the playoffs. Uh, so it, it can happen. It can happen. The Philadelphia Eagles can lose. I mean, excuse me. The Philadelphia Eagles can beat uh, Washington on Sunday. Uh, and there, there are people that believe Philadelphia not going to play because of the hatred of the Cowboys. That's 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 crazy. Uh, Peterson, uh, the head coach of Philadelphia, is getting destroyed in the media this year. Uh, he's and some would think he's playing for a job. Jalen Hurts is on a mission. Because he's reading the press too, whether he won't admit it or not. And he's seeing what uh Carson Wentz is saying. Uh Carson Wentz does not want to be a bag up. There's a possibility, of course, that this time next year, I would not be surprised if Carson Wentz is in a different uniform. Uh and so Car uh Jalen Hurts is playing because he wants the job. There's no question. So these guys are gonna play Sunday. It, I, these guys are gonna play. They gonna play. The question is, can Alex Smith? And I hate to say this, you know, because I don't like Washington. Uh, I don't like Washington at all. But just think about it, y'all. See, God, you know, I hate this. God kind of sets things up for some time for people. You know what I'm saying? I, I hope this is not the situation. I just don't. But I can't deny what I'm saying. Alex Smith went through all of them surgeries. The man almost died, y'all, when he caught infection in his leg. The man done had over 14 surgeries concerning the leg. His leg, if you've seen his leg, it it, it just don't look right. And 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 and, and the God, the, the, you know, I ain't going to say God. I'm just going to say it is set up that this guy, who has battled to get back on the football field, who is going to win the comeback player of the year this year. No doubt about it. He deserves it. And it just seemed like things are set up for Alex Smith to deliver a championship to Washington in his comeback year, who got the job because everybody was hurt, who got the job because the Haskins won nothing, he was listed as the third quarterback on the team, y'all, whether y'all remember that or not. Alex Smith was listed as the third quarterback on the team. Now he's playing, and <laughs> it, it's setting up for such a movie 
like drama that he's going to pull this out thing out for, for Washington. I, I just, I can't deny what I'm seeing. I hope it's not the case. I hope Philly beats Washington, but I, I can't deny the obvious. <laughs> The great nigga Bishop Browser, who who's a who's a, a bishop. Bishop, I see you, bro. I see you, Bishop. Here you go. Now the Lord, you know the Lord is a Washington fan. Yeah, I know. Here we go. Uh, I I I, be, I thought he was a Cowboy fan too. Now, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying things are set up with this with this. And you know that you know this is gonna be the talk. I mean, come on, this guy. Oh, oh, there's no question about it. Adam Smith will be the comeback player of the year. I don't even think it's close. Uh, I, don't, I don't, if, Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it should be unanimous. That's what I'm going to say. I want to see the person that's not going to vote for him and tell me who it was. At first, I I thought Alden Smith was was there, uh, but Alden hadn't had, you know, all the stats that he's had since then. Uh, so I, I, that's, that's the only thing I'm going to say about that. But I think Alex Smith – you know, it would be an incredible story that this man who started off as the third-string quarterback who will now lead this team because when he entered in, things turned around. Uh, things turned around for Alex Smith. For Washington, when Alex Smith became the quarterback, they became consistent. Uh, so ain't nothing wrong with Alex Smith's brain. It was just something wrong with his leg. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? He was always known as a smart football player. Always. Uh, check down Alex is what they call him. He rarely took chances. He threw to running back. His teams always won at least 10, 10 games with Kansas City. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm cheering for Alex. I, you know, I'm a, I don't like Washington, but, hey, how can you not, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I I have to admit it. I I I'm cheering for Alex Smith. I'm just not cheering for him to beat us Sunday. I hope we I hope Philly knock his head off. To be honest with you, but you can't deny the truth. Uh, it's there. So I, I I hope we pull it off. I hope we handle our business first, which is really all we need to be concentrated on. Don't even be worried. We we'll worry about Washington after we beat the Giants. Cowboys play at the 12 o'clock game. The Washington Philadelphia game is at Sunday night. So uh we'll have plenty of time to get all your, your new whatever, get your Philadelphia Eagle pom poms out and chilling uniforms and all that kind of stuff. We'll worry about that. We locked in on the Giants. Uh Jason Garrett, I'm not sure if he's back on the field. He was uh, away with uh COVID issues. Uh, but please understand, there's a storyline there. How do you think Jason Garrett don't want to put the Cowboys out? You don't think he want to put that put that final bullet into this season and say good night? Jason Garrett is, will will be coaching his his game the hardest that he can on this Sunday. He would love to have the fate of the Cowboys in his hand. So you can rest assured the Cowboys want uh the Giants want to win, obviously. But Jason, it's a little bit special for Jason Garrett. Uh he wants to beat us badly. Uh badly. Yes, yes. Jason Garrett wants to, to beat us very, very, very badly. Uh he I'm quite sure he has some a little animosity in his system, even though he's the type of guy to say the right things and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you you know he he has a little fire in his belly uh, of the way that he was let go. Uh, you, you know, he I, I believe that. I just think that we just got too much momentum. I think we got too much talent to be losing this game. Uh, I really feel that. I just think that we're supposed to pull it out. Um, uh, this Sunday, I really do. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I feel like we're supposed to pull it out. And if we pull it out Sunday, I mean, if we win Sunday, they would have finished this year strong. Uh, 
and it's something to build. It's something to build. I agree, Eric. You're right. That that that, that look. That's 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 the black cat comment there. That E cushion. Y'all see it there. That is the the black cat um, statement. That is one hundred percent absolutely true. When it comes to us, how many times have we been in this last game position and we needed to win? And then I, I don't I don't remember a game where we actually won, to be honest with you, when we needed it. The last game of the year. My mind going back to the Romo years, we know we never won those. I always come down. I, I just I, I just I, I believe we're gonna do it this time. Uh Kevin said they're competitive, of course. They want to win. We play like we've been playing the last year. We win. It's that simple. I, I just really believe that. Also, Kale, you're right. I I just think we're playing t- too well. Uh, see, see, th- this is what I've seen this year. The guys have always had the talent. Okay, check me out right here. See, it's bad when you are, when you have a bad team. And, you know, they're just doing what they can do, kind of like Jacksonville and, you know, teams like that, Cincinnati. You know, they're just doing what they can do. Uh, you know, they're they just doing it. Uh, you know, they're not talented. But when you get a team like the Cowboys, who are incredibly talented, but here's the thing about the Cowboys, they've always been talented but they weren't playing with confidence. You see what I'm saying? It is 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 it's a difference when you're talented, but you don't play with confidence. We've been playing like we've been playing like uh uh we've been playing like we've been walking on a, on eggshells this year. They haven't been having fun. I'll give you a slight example of that. Everybody talking about Ezekiel, everybody getting hype and all that kind of stuff. It's fine. Watch, watch this. Y'all, I'm going to take your mind back to the game. When Ezekiel Elliott in the fourth quarter started running pretty good, he got a couple first downs, especially that big long run he had. Uh, do y'all remember Ezekiel Elliott, for those that are on Facebook and, and YouTube and uh, Periscope, y'all can see me. Uh, but when Ezekiel got up, he started doing this. And y'all see him do the feed me for those on pod being, Y'all know when Ezekiel Elliott get up and walk and do the feed me sign where he act like he got a spoon. Let me ask y'all this. When is the last time y'all seen Ezekiel Elliott do that? You see what I'm saying? Wasn't having fun. And, and Ezekiel Elliott was getting first downs. It's just that he wasn't, it, you know, it, it wasn't no fun. It was It was no no, I ain't seen Ezekiel Elliott do that in, in, my God, what, four, five? I haven't seen him do it. And you know Ezekiel Elliott, every time he gets a first down, he always gets up and does the feed me sign. That's his That's his thing. He ain't done that in a while. It ain't because he wasn't getting a couple first down. I mean, he 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 he's doing stuff. So I, 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 these guys are having fun now, and when, it's nothing like winning that will help make you have some fun. I will give you that. Uh, I'm, 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 I, they're having fun. They're, they're, they're excited. You can tell when a guy get a sack, the whole team, you know, congratulate. I ain't seen it this year. I'm, I'm seeing it now. So the confident when you got a team that's multi talented. Like the Cowboys are with, and they start playing like they know they can, then this team becomes a little dangerous. And they are playing well. I, I you know, it is what it is. Um, I can't deny it. they are playing well. Uh, they have, I ain't gonna say they shut me up because I, I said they weren't gonna win the division. I said that it be you know during the middle of the year. I'm still, I'm, I'm shocked. Uh, I can see how they can though, uh, but as I'm not, I don't put a lot of weight on things that I can't control. All I know is the Cowboys can control the Giants. They can't control the Washington Philadelphia game. So I ain't gonna, 
I, you know, it is. I just be watching that game. Uh, you know, you know. Of course, if we win, uh, you know, I guess I had to. You know, I might go in my closet over there and see if I can find a Philadelphia pom pom. I guess I don't know. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, man. Hey, hey, what's up, what's up, thug? I see you, man. Uh, I, I see you. Hey, on Pop, and he says, and, and stay you, true blue. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, tr I like that. Thug Life, who's a cowboy fan on Pop, he says, grow, teach, and preach, and stay you, true blue. That's what he said. Let me put this out. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I gotta, if we win Sunday, macho. If we win Sunday, I'm going to have to go against a lot of stuff that I have said, and I'm going to have to look. I mean, if, if the door is there and they crack the door and all it takes is a loss, you know, I you know, I'm a, I got a few closets in my house. I'm going to have to see if I – I got plenty of cloudboard clothes. I know that, but I, I don't just remember, you know. I don't know if I ever bought anything in Philadelphia. I don't think I got it here is – you know, I got a video game with 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 uh with Rocky on it, Rocky Balboa. I mean, he feel it. That's I mean, hey, that's about the, the only feel everything I got in there. I got the virtual uh Creed game. <laughs> I got the Creed game on on PlayStation Four, the boxing game, and on the on the boxing game, you know, you can pull up Rocky Balboa. I, I mean, I that's all I got. You know, I. <laughs> I don't think feel it. I got, I got you. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Macho. I do have on my iPad and computer. I, I, I guess I can go to YouTube and pull up the rocket, the rocket theme music. You know, I, I guess I could do that. You know, I, I, I probably gonna have to do that. Cause I don't remember buying nothing Philly in, in my house. I just, I just don't see it. Uh, so, I, I, I you know, I, I may, have to, I may, if we win, I may have to saturate my house after the 12 o'clock game and just put on repeat and shuffle the rocket theme music from about three o'clock all the way to about 10 o'clock. It just none stop playing. I, that, 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 I, I mean, that's what I'm have to do. I'm, I'm going, I ain't buying no Philadelphia stuff. Let me just stop. I won't put my money on anything. I'm going to get this YouTube going. I'm going to put this rocket theme music on and I'm going to play it for about six hours straight. If we win Sunday, I, I mean, if we win, hey, I, I, yeah, I, I, you know, for all those that wanted to draft and all that, y'all, look, I was one that said, hey, I never thought that we were going to get a top five pick because I thought the guys were going to win at least one or two games, and that way they would knock it down. <clears throat> but they won three with the possibility of four. So all this dreaming of a top – three top five pick, that's gone. We just about at the point we'll be drafting where we usually draft, which is probably 18 to 22. That's where we are. So the draft thing is, is just shut down. The guys who we wanted, you know, the real top guys, they'll be long gone when we draft. So because of that, you know, if we win, hey, 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 yeah, yeah. I like, I like that thug life. I see thug life done, 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 done took it to another level. Thug life say that we need to prank up because that is Rocky Three now. What he said, he said we should put on the Eye of the Tiger music. I wish y'all could see what Pod Bean is saying, but I'm just relating it. He says he he said he said we need to put on Eye of the Tiger music. I, hey, I might just do a repeat with both of them, the Rocket theme music and Eye of the Tiger. I, I mean, I'm going straight Philly. I never thought I would cheer for Philly if we win Sunday. I never thought that I would cheer for Philly. I I I I got to admit it. Some of you don't want to don't want us to don't want us to go to playoffs because you think we're gonna go back to the old statement. You saying that we're going to get killed by Tampa Bay? You saying we're going to get killed by, um, you know, uh, whoever? Uh, all the teams are good. So uh, the only thing I will say to that is, is this. 
It's just something about playoff football where anything can happen. We don't look, you know, since y'all arguing up to me or talking about the Cowboy defense is right. 32nd. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. I'm aware that our defense is not good. I get it. I agree with you 100%. Ain't no sense of you talking about, uh, I, 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 ain't no sense you talking about that the offense is going to get lit up in the playoffs and all this stuff. I get it. But at the same time, because you're absolutely right. I, I wouldn't put – I'm just like Vegas. If Tampa Bay went to Dallas, uh, of course, Tampa Bay is going to be favored. No question. Every playoff team that that Seattle, whoever comes out, who's going to win? The, oh, Seattle's going to win the West, so they'll get a home playoff game. Uh, who, who else? Who's the other wild card? Uh, Tampa would be one. And uh, help me out, somebody. Who's, who, who's going to be not the division winners? Who's the playoffs? I know Tampa is one. Uh, is it Arizona? Am I right? Is it Arizona? I don't. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but whoever comes to Dallas would be the favorite if we make it. Of course, if we make it. Uh, Kevin said, "I want to win in the off season. That's the only way we're gonna win in the regular season and beyond." I, see, see, that's what I love about. Uh, my brother Kevin, and and then that's also what I love about Macho. See, two things can be right at the same time in this thing. See what I'm saying? Y- y'all, y'all understand what we're saying? Uh, it, it, two things can be right. Uh, I, I for one think that we need to go uh, do the off season. I'm not talking about the draft. I'm talking about free agency. I would love to see us go after. We, because the truth of the matter is, y'all. Imagine us healthy, okay? Imagine us healthy. Imagine Dak being the the quarterback. Imagine Jarwin back. Imagine some of the injuries that we have on defense. Plug them back in. The truth of the matter is, is that we're really not that far away, okay? I'm I'm serious. Uh, We're really not. Uh, and then you add in some extra pieces in the draft. This team really not far away. I mean, they really not. They they are they are a problem. Uh, and the off season, a couple of real good free agents. You know, one D tackle, good one. And I heard, I know some of you think about snacks. I would love to have snacks. I would love to have them. I wish we would go ahead and get them. I wish we would. Uh, that type of guy can solve a lot of issues. Uh, a, a couple. We, we need a we need a safety, and I ain't talking about a free safety. We need a strong safety, somebody that can play. We need linebackers. I mean, but but see, one guy, somebody like a Chris Jones from Kansas City, who's gonna be a free agent this year. You add a Chris Jones to this team, look out. That, that you get a Chris Jones, a Randy Gregory, and a Demarcus Lawrence on this team, your whole life changes. See, sometimes we got guys out here that can change your whole life just by adding one player, one real dog can change your whole thing. We're not really that far away. I'm I'm serious. Once you get everybody, you know, plugged in, we're really not that far away. I need I need another left tackle. I need one left tackle. I, I I need a left tackle. Give me that. I'm ready to roll. Lyle Collins will be back next year. Zach Martin will be on the field. Look like this Sunday. We all know what he can do. Uh, our, our center, uh, Tyler. B, B, look, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Y'all know, but y'all ain't got to write it against so baby. By Badaz, whatever. Some folks call him bad and something else and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't I don't I don't know. But Tyler, I just say Tyler. Joe Looney is is decent. Connor Williams, quiet as kept, y'all. Connor Williams has had a good solid year. He ain't been getting beat a whole lot lately. Uh he is not. He's done well. And shout out to Steele, who's played left tackle. He ain't been getting destroyed. 
he's not he's not been getting destroyed uh last year. So the backups are getting some valuable stuff, but when you replace that with guys who are real linemen, look out. Okay. Uh, I mean, you put Dak back in. I mean, we saw what Dak was doing before he, he got hurt. I mean, we already know uh, what Dak is going to do. So, I, you know, we're not that far away. So, I agree with that. But at the same time, it's not our fault that a 7-9 team is going to make the playoffs this year, whether it's Washington, Dallas, or the Giants. And if you got a chance to get in, these guys, the playoffs don't come every year for everybody. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you have to take advantage of the time if you get the opportunity. Uh, and forgive me, uh, I, I you may not agree with this, but I'm just the one, one of those type that believe that uh, if you have an opportunity, I'd rather have one than not to to have one at all. That's just me. Uh, and so when it's all said and done, one of these three teams ain't going to care what nobody said. They're going to say, we here now. Whoever comes out on Sunday, that team is going to be saying, hey, what we did in the regular season don't mean nothing. We here now. Hey, we got a shot just like anybody else. And all and on any given Sunday, anybody can be beat. Uh, we we're saying that's what they're gonna be saying. That's what the players gonna be saying. That's what the that's what the coaching staffs are gonna be saying. They ain't gonna care nothing about us saying, "Hey, y'all shouldn't even been in the playoffs it, with, with this ragged." You know, all of them got flaws. Watching the Giants and the Cowboys, they ain't gonna care nothing about what what the what the fans are saying. They ain't gonna care nothing what ESPN saying, Fox, Sesame Street, Electric Company. They ain't gonna care what nobody say. All they gonna be saying is, "We here now. We we here now. Let's go." That's 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 what they gonna be saying. And uh, hey, it's, it's it, you got a shot. You know, I don't know what I'm saying. You got a shot. You got a shot. If you can pull it off, you got a shot. If you can get in, you have a shot. Uh, and that's the only thing I'm saying. Now, I ain't saying it's going to happen. Because like I said, it's not really going to be on us. We got to handle our business, which is beat the Giants. And then after that, dun, 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 <laughs> the chilling will begin. If, if if we can if we can get it there, hey Wendy, thank you, peace and love to you. I can't get your football picture that you just put up here. Uh, if you're on Facebook, y'all can might can see that, but I can't put it on here for restream. Let me close out by what was said about my guy Thug Life, and I'll close with this tonight. I appreciate everybody that is with me on Podbean. Hey, some of you guys on here, uh. Let me know on Podbean if you have a podcast. I want to shoot out your show, and I appreciate you guys hanging with me. And before I leave, uh, Podbean, if you scroll up, you can see uh, uh, my cash app there, or you can also see the golden beans there where you can uh, give gifts uh, or you want to become a patron of the show. Uh, you can have that red button there. Uh, but consider just becoming a patron of the show. I don't ask for much. You can see that when you get there. And if you don't, I, it's, it's cool. I appreciate you just hanging with me. Facebook, if you are here, I'm going to put this up again. There you go. If you want to uh, become a uh, contributor of the show, those things are there uh, for you. You can do that. Uh, just go to my cash app there, the big time show. If you're on Periscope, you can see that there also. Uh, the big, I mean, dollar sign, the big time show, and and uh, I would appreciate it. If not, I appreciate you just listening in. It's cool. I appreciate. It. Let me close out with this tonight. Uh, if you're if you're a Facebook friend of mine, um, thank you so much. 
Uh, I'm uh, if you are a Facebook friend of mine, uh, you saw a post that I put up earlier today. Uh, Podbean, I am going to give. I am going to um, put up my name so that you can. For those that want to follow me on Facebook, uh, all you have to do, Podbean, is go to that right there. There it is. Uh, if you are, if you are not, I guess I need to do the same thing here on, um, live uh, on Facebook again, because most people, if you watch me on Facebook, obviously you're a friend of mine. Uh, but some of you guys may be watching from different groups and you are not a personal Facebook friend of mine. Uh, if you want to become one, there it is right there. If you're on YouTube, there it is. Uh, my name is there. Just find that name, my name. And put in, of course, a request to be a friend, and I'll add you in. If you saw me earlier today, I posted a picture of myself. Uh, he could say, before we before I close out, he could say they should make a rule that says you have to be at least eight and eight to qualify, even if you win your division. If you're not, then it goes to the next winning team in the hunt or let the few that I play to win the spot. Uh... Because I'm going to have to slightly disagree with you on that, even though your premise is actually does make good sense. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's just that you, the, my argument to that would be is that you have to reward the team that wins your division. I mean, that, that has to be a reward for that. That's, that's all. That's my only argument to that. I don't, and, and, and I don't care what your record is. If you were the best team in your division, then you should be rewarded with something. Uh, that that's my only argument uh, for that. So I, I I'm gonna have to disagree slightly with you on that one. Uh, I just think that a team that wins their division, he, he could say even in special circumstances. I get what you're saying, and it makes sense. You you do want the best teams to play in the playoffs. The best teams. I agree. I, I I I would I would agree with that. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of teams that are not gonna make the playoffs this year because of the NFC East. <laughs> it's just that simple. You're gonna have at least two teams. I know. Uh, I I wasn't sure. I don't know if the, the Cardinals are in the hunt. I I don't know. I I forgive me for not having the the playoff chart here. Uh, but I think the Cardinals are in this fight. Uh. Let me just think real quick. Tampa Bay. So we know New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Atlanta's not going, Carolina's not going. So it's those two teams, Atlanta, Tampa Bay. Let's go to the south. Uh, well, that is the south. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go to the north. Uh, we have uh, Green Bay is going definitely. Uh, we have Detroit is not going. Chicago is in the fight. Okay. Chicago is in the fight. Uh, is one other team I'm missing from the set, the north. Minnesota's not going. Okay, the West, uh, the 49ers are not going. Seattle is going. Arizona is in the fight. The Rams are in the fight. Hey, Jay in the Bay, I see you, man. Uh, the the the, the Rams are in the fight, and they just lost golf with a broken thumb, so he's out. So they're playing with a quarter. Back of quarterback, okay. So the Rams are in the fight. They have a better record than the Cowboys. Um, who else am I missing? The East, of course. So whoever we in the East. So let's just say it's just yeah, exactly. So let's just say let's just say one of them teams, the Cardinals, the Chicago Bears, and uh, uh, the Rams. One of them are not gonna make it. Okay, and they will have a better record than than whoever comes out of the East, and there. And I guess E, because your argument could be like, hey, it's just a shame that a team that only won seven games is going to get in while we sit on the playoff, and the only reason why they got in because it's Vision Harbor. I get that part, but and, and I I agree, I I kind of get that, but you have to reward the team that wins the division. They are the division champions. 
I don't care what the record was when the history books will show that whoever comes out this Sunday will be the NFC East division champions. It is hey, that's what's gonna happen. And you have to reward people uh that that win the division. And even though their record is horrible. Uh, and that's my only argument. Let me close out with this. And I appreciate all you guys on Podbean uh, and all you guys on Periscope, Facebook, and YouTube. I put out a post on my Facebook post today with me wearing some cowboy paraphernalia. And uh, uh, and in my post, I kind of said, well, you know, I was born in 1973, <clears throat> and my love for the Cowboys started in 1977 uh so i realized that for some of you guys i'm a little bit older than you guys i'm one of the ones that remember the super bowls from the 1970s because a lot of you guys uh you know y'all some of y'all you know y'all just go uh y'all just go to the 90s uh and and that's where your that's that's your foundation which is nothing wrong with that you were born then it is what it is <clears throat> uh, so I'm not trying to say, hey, I got more deference and I got more rank because I've been a Cowboy fan just probably long as some of you were born. <laughs> and I'm just being honest. But here's my thing. My love for the Cowboys started in 1978 Super Bowl when the Cowboys beat the Broncos to win the Super Bowl. And I can remember as a boy, my father, uh, who was in his 20s at the time because he was a Cowboy fan. And, you know, usually sons like to be like their daddy. Uh, and I was one of those ones that followed my daddy in just about everything that he did. So my love for the Cowboys started just by watching him and his emotion and his responses to the Cowboys back then. Roger Staubach, Tony Dorsett, Drew Pearson, Tony Hill, all these guys, Randy White, all the list go on and on. Harvey Martin, you know, all of Thurman and my God, Charlie Waters, and um, you know, my 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 list. I, I go way back, and uh, I can all. I just remember the joy on my daddy's face and the celebration back then. It was Stroh's beer. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Stroh's. See that's see. That that let you know how old I am. Y'all don't know. Look up on Google. Y'all don't y'all don't know that. Some of y'all y'all foundation is Bud Light. Y'all forgot that Budweiser was in existence before Bud Light. <laughs> Some of y'all a little bit too young, but it, it's okay. But back then, Stroh's beer was was the hot you know was the beer back then. I remember my dad having beers and excited. I remember some guys coming over and watching the Super Bowl. I, I just remember the joy and I was happy just because my dad was happy and his happiness at the time was tied into the cowboy. So whenever the cowboy and back then in the seventies, uh, the late seventies. And of course in the early eighties before cable television came into play, the three teams in Memphis where I live, the three, the two teams really primarily they came on was the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's really all that we saw back then. Uh, the 49ers, when they came in the 80s, they started being shown on the late games. That's before cable television. Uh, so if you were in Memphis, all you knew was the uh, – yeah, yeah, that's right, How You know what time it is. That's right, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that, 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 was, that was the, the day. If you're old enough to remember that, you know exactly. You know I'm telling you 100% true. The 49ers really didn't start being seen to the 80s when they got on their run. They always had the late game. So primarily it always was the Steelers and the Cowboys on TV. Uh, and that's what I grew up in. So I've been wearing Cowboy stuff since 1977. Let me say that again. I've been wearing only Dallas Cowboy stuff since 1977, I'm not the type of fan that switches teams and, and one of those ones that says I have two teams. The only thing that you can give me 
some flack for us that I've always told everybody. My favorite player of all time was Ray Lewis. I loved the way he played the game. I played football, and I played like Ray Lewis before Ray Lewis was saying. I was hype. I was talking. I was crazy, and I always made plays. Those of you that what, from Kirby High School and and watching me, y'all y'all know I'm I was that guy. I was an all state, uh, uh, all district, all that, all that mess, all that kind of stuff. So I played like that. I, the only thing you could give me for stepping outside of cowboy land was saying that the, uh, uh, Ray Lewis was my favorite football player. So from 1977 to this present moment, I've been a cowboy fan. I ain't got no other team. That, that's it. So I've been, I've been as high as the mountain. And I've been as low as the valley with this team. I've seen the good teams. I've seen the bad teams. I've seen the great players. I've seen the, the horrible players. I've seen the bad coaches. I've seen the bad. I've seen it all. I've seen Tom Landry. I've seen Jimmy Johnson. But I also saw Dave Campo. I saw. I mean, I've seen it. I saw Barcells. I saw uh, Wade Phillips. I saw Jason Garrett. I see Coach McCarthy now. I've seen them all. I've seen Quincy Carter. I've seen Tony Romo. I've seen Troy Eggman. I've seen Bernie Kozar. I've, I've seen uh, the boy that played baseball. Let's hey, show, show you. I forgot his name. Uh, the one that played baseball with the Yankees. I've seen all. I've seen Vinny Testaverde. I've, I've seen all these guys, man. I've seen them all. I've seen them all. I stuck with them all. Those that know me, I've been a member of Facebook since 2009. So that means I've been on Facebook, oh my God, for a pretty good while now. All right? Y'all ain't never seen me with nothing else. Okay? For those that have been with me, you ain't seen me nothing else. I'm saying all this to say this. Thank you, True Blue, because you brought up something. Let me tell you something about me, and I'm going to close with y'all. I dare anybody to tell me that I am not a Cowboy fan. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, sir. I mean, I ain't going to fight you or nothing like that. It's just that you, you just because I'm honest about my team does not take away my Cowboy card. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? Just because I say we're horrible does not mean that I am not a fan. <laughs> it just means that I'm an honest cowboy fan. Just because I don't have faith that to believe that we're not going to win a certain game does not mean that I am not a cowboy fan. It just believe it just means I don't think we're going to win a certain game. That's all it means. It does not mean I'm cheering for the other team to beat us. It just, at the time, I just don't think we're good enough to win. I dare anybody to question my star. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I See, I, that's how I am. I call it the star club. I am a lifelong member of the star club. I, I You can't diminish my star because I don't agree or I don't cheer. Uh, is is it, we got we got different type of cowboy fans. We got optimistic. My my guy Macho is on here, an optimistic cowboy fan, and then we got guys like my guy here, my family Kevin Kevin on here, uh, Kevin Carey, who's who's just like me, optimistic. Call it as you see it. It is what it is. If you saying the defense is playing well. You'll get you'll get a guy like me and say, "Yeah, they're opportunistic." But please understand, they're the thirty-second ranked defense in the league. That means they're the worst. Those are the facts, uh, and and I ain't scared to say it. They're the worst defense in the league. Sure, they got turnovers this week. Yeah, I give you that. But and but just because I said they're the worst defense in the league, that don't mean that I'm not a Cowboy fan, huh? I'm just want, I just want to get this real clear. I just want to get this real clear. 
I've been a cowboy fan before some of you guys were born. <laughs> Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be one when I'm in a box laying up in a church somewhere. I'm I'm gonna be a cowboy fan. I change not. I change not. If we if we old and seventeen, I'm still wearing my paraphernalia. Oh yeah, I, I and on that note, y'all can't see me on pod bean. Look at my shirt, y'all. I had to pull this one now because I'm already somewhat, I guess, to cheer. Just in case y'all don't see my t-shirt say the cowboys run the east. This was last year. Uh, I guess last year. Was this last year? I don't know. It says at the bottom, uh division champions. So I don't know if this was last year or the year before. I don't know whichever one it was. But I put this show on purpose because hey. Right now, we 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 got a shot. I just want to put that out there uh, for those that question, and I'm quite sure some of y'all are being questioned about your fandom if you don't uh, go along with rhetoric uh, that other cowboys have. Uh, don't be ashamed of your star. Don't be ashamed of your star. Don't be ashamed of your star. You're a cowboy fan. And you and because I've been a cowboy fan, let me put this out. Because I've been a cowboy fan, I got the right to change my rhetoric at any time. <laughs> yeah. I can say you playing horrible. And then the next week I can say you y'all done got hot. I can I can do that. I, I can do that. I can. I can say we ain't gonna win the division. And then come back and say, hey, we won division championship. And some of y'all say, well, you didn't think we were going to win. I don't care. I don't care. If we won division, I'm going to celebrate. I mean, hey, I, we going to playoffs. Hey, hey, might lose, but hey, we, we, we made it. And I got that right because I'm a Cowboy fan through and through. Blood, blood might have a little blue in it. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. That's how I am. Uh, so I dare anybody to question my fandom or uh, dare or question my star. I dare anybody. Uh, I'm a Cowboy fan. Ain't no doubt about it. Been one all my life uh, and will continue to be one. Jerry Jones, I don't care whoever the next owner going to be after Jerry once he leaves. I still be a cowboy fan. You know, I, I don't care. Some folks were saying, well, Jerry, when we had all this social justice thing going on, y'all cowboy fans should turn in your star the way Jerry Jones. It seemed like he racial. I, you know, that's another discussion for another time. But irregardless of that, I, I'm still a cowboy fan. It's in me. You understand what I'm saying? It's in me. I don't know no other way. So it is what it is. I appreciate you guys listening. Tune in with me on uh, what's the day? Tuesday. Yes. Uh, let's get hype on Saturday. Okay, it'll be the final show before the big Sunday come. Y'all come on with me on this Saturday at three o'clock. This Saturday at three o'clock. Let's get a little hype. Uh, we'll see what, what Coach McCarthy and Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, and we'll see what some of the players have said. We'll kind of uh, – we'll see how much more confident you guys are for Sunday. We'll see uh, – we'll see what's going on. Uh, we're going to have some fun. I need some of you guys uh, that's on Podbean. Uh, I need you – for those on Facebook and Periscope, and YouTube, uh, I need you to transfer at some point uh, because some of you guys are regulars and, and you guys, I appreciate uh, seeing some of the same people here uh, that hang with me. I need you guys to to go to Podbean, however. You can download Podbean on your phone or your computer. Follow me there. It's the same thing, the big time show. Follow me there. The reason why I want you to do that is because I want to have some of you guys call in on the show. You can only do that through Podbean. 
I can do it here where we are now. I have to do a split screen, but some of you don't want your face to be seen, and that's cool. But if you're on par being it'll just be your voice. So it's almost like a call in radio show. Uh, and I want to, I want some of you guys to uh, join in and and let's talk uh, where everybody that can hear you uh, on the show. I would love to have you guys. Join me on Podbean. The only way you can do that is to join in. So, again, uh, for some of you that hang with me, download Podbean, P-O-D. I guess I need to put that in because some of you may be thinking I'm saying Podbean. But it is this, Podbean. Uh, and actually, I put it, it's really that there. It's really Podbean, but I guess I, I guess I need to put you at this. You want to? I put the website down. You can put that there. Go to that. Search out the big time show. Just follow it. Turn on the live notifications, and you will be able to join in. I want Saturday. I want some of you guys to join me on the show, uh, for the show, and just talk to me real quick. And see what's going on. Hey, matter of fact, can we practice this before we go? Those that are on Podbean, somebody try to call in real quick. All you got to do is go to that uh, guest and call in. Press that button there. That's all you got to do. If you can, just press in the button. Just give me your comment, one comment or so, just to see how it works. I don't know if people on Facebook would be able to hear all this. Uh, I doubt it. But I'm going to let try to see. Somebody call in for me real quick. Uh, I don't know who you are, if you're still here with me. Uh, I don't know if you're online or not. But if not, don't worry about it. Uh, in five, four, three, two, and one. That's okay. Don't worry about it. On this Saturday, why don't you guys switch over to that uh, and join in with me? And we'll just make this show a fan show on Saturday uh, at 3 o'clock. And we can talk about a few issues uh, that we're seeing and leads up to the game on Sunday. Uh, whatever you want to talk about, Cowboy related, uh, we can do that on Saturday at 3 o'clock. So, again, uh, go to that that you see on the screen, on the screen there, podbean.com. You'll be able to. Uh, join in. Hey, Cummings and his culture. Hey, I appreciate you. You join in at the tail end of the show, but I thank you for peeping in. Hey, if you don't mind, why don't you uh, go back and check out uh, the show? I uh, hope you enjoyed. And if not, hang with me on Saturday at three o'clock. Just checking out some other plays on the platform. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Uh, Cummings and culture. Uh, do you have a podcast show? Uh, if you do, uh, let me know. You do. What is your show? Is it is it this comments in culture? Obviously, but those are on pod, man. Hey, y'all, my my folks, let's go to uh, comments in culture and, and follow him. Hey, comments in culture, why don't you follow me on on mine? Uh, this is a sports show. Uh, I primarily talk about the Cowboys uh, and all sports related issues, and I also talk about uh, every now and then some religious topics i am a preacher uh i'm an assistant pastor uh uh at a church here in memphis and every now and then i will go uh religion and talk about a religious topic not necessarily bible study or a preaching opportunity i'll talk about some things uh that i think that you know the church ought to pay attention to uh such as something like you know, we all enter in virtual worship. How can we make that better? What do we need to do? How can we reach people? Uh, there you go. I appreciate you comments and culture. Thank you for sharing the show, man. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you so much. Where are you from, uh, Cummings and culture? What what state are you in? What uh, city, state you're in? Alabama. Okay. Appreciate you so much in Alabama. I know you're getting fired up for the for the national championship semifinal game with the Tide uh, coming up and going against Notre Dame. I know you are. Uh, I know it's big for you guys down there uh, in Alabama. So I appreciate you, Newt. Thank you for transferring over. There you go. Howard Q. Howard Carter, my guy. 
my frat brother, that came in the pod, man. Appreciate you. Some of you guys at your leisure, uh, will you turn in? Nope. Do me a favor. Talk to me. Push in. I know you're getting used to it. Push in on that thing there, Fred. And let me holler at you for a minute on pod, man. Let me see if you know what you're doing real quick. Put call in real quick. All you got to do is that you should see that uh, guest and call in uh, real quick. Press that button for me unless you can or you can't. I don't know if you can. You may be busy. I don't know. Uh, I'm waiting on you, Fred. I just want to see. If uh you're doing uh if you can call in real quick. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much, so much, so much, so much. We'll see you at three o'clock um uh, for another test before but but look, let me let me caution some of y'all, okay? Y'all know how the cowboys are. Okay. Y'all y'all know how the cowboys carry us. On this roller coaster ride, they've been doing us like this for years. Y'all know that, okay? Y'all know that it's gonna be an emotional game. Hey, Eric, Eric, uh, I can't read the rest of it. I guess it's Eric K something two thousand and three. Uh, thanks for joining the show. You joining in at the last moment? I hope that you would download the show and just listen to what we had to say. Do you have a podcast show, uh, Eric? Hey, those are on Podbean. Go to Cummings and Culture. Let's follow their show. They're a member of the Podbean family. Uh, and they had enough, um, you know, had enough time to come in and pop in on our show. And uh, and she just shared our live show. Let's let's go in and let's support uh this show, Cummings and Culture, and let's 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 cheer them on also. Cummings and Culture, I will be. Uh, following your show uh, in just a minute, I guess, uh, where I can uh, follow and I'll do it. And I co-host the Slightly Serious Show and Chit Chat with the Old Man. Hey, appreciate you, Eric. Hey, for those on Podbean, let's go follow the Slightly Serious Show. Uh, let's go follow this person and, and let's support their show also. Uh, we just a few podcasts. Hey, we're just trying to, uh, for most of us, we're just trying to branch out a little bit and trying to, uh, you know, in this pandemic that we're living in, we're just trying to open up another door for us. Some want to bless their families uh, with another stream of income. Uh, is hey, hey, we're just trying to do something. So the more support that you do for other people, uh, I'm quite sure you'll be blessed by it. So let's try to support these people. Eric, I will follow your show. I uh, hope that you follow mine. Uh, but I appreciate you just popping in, hanging with me. Uh, as I said before, also a freaking participant is okay, 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 okay. Comes this culture, the daily struggle of two middle aged men. So Eric is a obviously a serious podcaster. He's on a lot of shows. Uh, uh, we need to follow him and just just hey, appreciate you so much, uh, Eric, for just popping in here. Eric is a promoter. You are a promoter. Don't have my own show at this time. Eric, are you promoting Expo Promoter on Podbean? Eric, uh, hey, uh, I don't know what made you pop in my show, but if you're an expert promoter, hey, promote me. <laughs> okay. Hey. Okay, okay, Eric. I appreciate you. Hey. Well, Eric, I'm sorry that you caught me on the on the tail end of this. Uh, maybe you probably need to, before you decide to, you know, jump in and promote other people, maybe you need to hear some of the content. So I invite you to check out some of my other stuff. Uh, uh, and, hey, hey, hopefully, maybe you can, uh, maybe, we, maybe we can talk. Uh, send me an email and we'll communicate that way and see if you can, you can help me. Hey, I need promotion too. I think I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm a pretty decent podcast. Okay. Also remember the rabbit hole. Okay. All right. Eric. Okay. Oh my goodness. I got a lot of folks. Hey, Ryan on Facebook. Hey man. Appreciate you. I have my own show. Ryan, uh, for those on Facebook, let me promote him. Hey, uh, Ryan is a pod has his own show clutch sports talk live. 
uh, on Facebook. Uh, hey, let's support him. Hey, appreciate you popping in, Ryan. Uh, I don't know if you caught the show or not, but probably going to have to go back and check me out and uh, and hope you like the show. Appreciate all you guys. Uh, very friendly shows. Thank you. Thank you, Commons and Culture. Hey, I'm going to follow um, you, Commons and Culture. Check some of your stuff out. Uh, and I'm out of here Saturday at 3 o'clock, everybody. Hey, I need every Cowboy fan that's, that, that can and will join me at 3 o'clock. Let's have a blast. It'll be the new year. It'll be the brand new. Exactly. Thank you, Eric. I say happy new year to you. It'll be the first uh, show of the brand new year of the big time show. I want to start that year off with you guys helping me out. This is going to be a fan show on Saturday. We're going to talk Cowboy. We're going to get a little hype for the game on Sunday. Uh, we're going to talk about any other Cowboy-related issues that you want to discuss. I'm going to be crazy. Ain't no sense of me lying. I'm going to pre-warn you now. Listen, I'm going to be funny. I'm going to be crazy. I'm going I'm, to I'm, 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 look. I'm 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 I'm, I'm be in rare form on this Saturday. I'm just telling y'all now. I'm going to be in rare form this Saturday. I hope you be here, uh, and, and I hope that you know get get ready because it's going to be funny. Uh, but but as I close, because I keep getting these conversations going all over. Uh, I want to tell all my cowboy fans this. Because of the way the Cowboys do us with this roller coaster, emotional, depression, satisfaction ride that we always be on every year, I want to give you guys some advice as we close. Okay? I want to give you guys this. For those of us that have health issues, please take your blood pressure medication. <laughs> I am. I am the one and only, y'all. I'm big time. Yes, I am. Y'all better get that blood pressure medication going. <laughs> This is, without a doubt, Eric, I'm telling you now, I'm small in the beginning, but hey, I've been doing it since August, but I'm hot, man. I want the best, because I'm real, you understand? This is the Big Time Show. Woo! I will see y'all this Saturday. 3 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Y'all better get ready. Here we come, Giants. Y'all ready? Woo! We'll see you. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for hanging with me.